Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Guild Wars 1 Let's Play. I want to thank you all for coming out here today. Hope you had a lovely day. It's currently Cinco de Mayo here, which is in part why this episode's out a little bit later. I may have um, had a couple margaritas. And by a couple, I mean uh, like half a bottle of pre-mixed margaritas and taking a nap. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's why tips is out a little bit late. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, let's pick up this quest here. Same quest dialogue as the other one. Not going to read it. Um, at the end of a previous episode, we actually got Dunquero on the squad. Which is nice. We have our first, like, real healer, so we don't have to use the um, crummy figures they assign us with. And we've... Just nice to have our second hero. I was honestly half tempted just to make him a damage healer and just keep using the the hero healer. Or not the hero, the henchman healer, but nah. But we're going to grab a couple quests. I did do a little bit of grinding towards the Sunspear title just so we can do a couple quests and finish it up here. Um, to be ready to move on to the next episode. So, the other recruits mock me. They claim I dropped my sword in the field during the last night's raid, but it's just not true. I dealt my enemy. It was surely a fatal blow, but the filthy Corsair ran off my blade still in his back. Help me trick him so I can reclaim my weapon my honor, would you? Well, let's go get this dude's weapon back. And this quest should give us enough so that we can start the next portion of the main quest. So we can do that as well in this episode, probably. Let's get on it. Tori. You look like a caster. Why would you have a sword? For honor. Ah, oh, he plays that Ubisoft game. <laughs> I've never played that game. I know very little about it. Is it really just right out here? There's oh, a wounded Corsair down there who probably has the sword in his back, so let's go uh, get it back. I really like the look of the Corsairs, the, um, let's see, this is one of them. There's some of them that have a blindfold, yeah, this one, here, this style. Um, there's actually a really rare tonic, um, that turns you into that person, which is owned for the longest time by someone named Nicki Minaj, at least that was their character name, um, who was a power trader, did a lot of, a lot of trading. He owned that that super rare tonic. There's only one of them in existence. There are two of them in existence, I think, actually. I think there's two of them in existence. Um, he owned one of them. He also had a mini Canaxi, which is one of the rarest minis in the entire game as well. But I haven't seen him in a long time. But I do remember seeing him just, like, around um, years ago. And it was pretty cool. Since the, uh, the Gale gave... The uh, Gale Gray Frogs are no longer with us. Uh, that's probably one of the that Canoxy and that Tonic are probably some of the rarest items that are actually left in circulation that aren't on like a band account or something. Get rest. And I can't wait to get one more hero to fill out the roster. All right, here's the wounded corsair. We just uh, get the sword back. Yep. Notch sword acquired. Talk to Putori. It's it is good to have my own sword back. No one will dare mock me now. Thank you, Spirit Giggle. All right, that's. That's that quest done, so we should be first spear by now. Yes, we are first spear, so we can go back and pick up our other quest for 15 attribute points. Nice, done. More attribute points. Keep bumping up the old spear mastery. Yeah, you definitely level a little bit fat, a little bit, sorry, excuse me, slower in Nightfall compared to Factions. Factions was kind of like a speed run. Um, I don't know. It definitely feels better. The start of Nightfall definitely feels better if this was your first experience into Guild Wars, so I think it's the way to do it. Um, this water looks so much better than in previous campaigns. I know it probably still looks bad by modern day standards, but 
having played through the other games, the you can really notice the engine improvements in um, Nightfall and Eye of the North later. The game just looks much better. Eye of the North does a lot of cool stuff too. We'll talk about that whenever we get there. Um, there's a lot of a lot of cool things that can happen. So just to give you an idea of like the timeline, um, the original Guild Wars and Factions came out only six months apart, um, not even a full year apart to my knowledge. And Nightfall came out a little bit later. Um, there's a little bit more time, so I think they had a little bit more time to actually develop stuff and like take the lessons they learned from prophecies. And work on them. Also, that's I think why Nightfall has like the best written story as well, because it's the one that gets the most that had the most effort put into it, and it wasn't um, like Eye of the North, which kind of has the slight weakness of trying to be the bridge to the Guild Wars Two universe. I mean, it's the same universe, but you know what I mean. It's trying to set up stuff for Guild Wars Two, not only do its own thing, and it's a little bit weaker because of that. I don't know. I don't know if you've ever read um, any of the like theoretical stuff about what the OG fourth campaign was going to be, but two of the, it had a summoner and a chronomancer with the two classes, because every every uh, expansion has two new classes. Um, and the theme was going to be like an island that disappears from reality. So I wonder if we'll ever expand, like, go to that in Guild Wars 2 now that they've finished off factions or working on finishing off the factions area so I don't know maybe I'm actually kind of interested to see how they'll take Guild Wars 2 I know this is a Guild Wars 1 and thing but I do stream Guild Wars 2 and I have started playing it again um, quite a bit we're going over here to find General Morgan and participate in these war games that's currently what our uh, current objective is while we just ramble oh this is the Astralarium let's read about the Astralarium The Astralarium, sitting high atop the bluffs of northern Istan, is home to the astronomically oriented order of the sky. This open-eared laboratory, with its multiple solar reflectors and pestle mounted astrolobes, is the center of astrological and astronomical study in Olona. Scholars from all three provinces flock to Zalon Reach in order to study the stars of the Astralarium and try to divide them near the ancient dark prophecies. Oh, so it mentions three provinces there. Um, I always forget this because this campaign is divided into more than like three regions, but there's only three regions that really have like people and stuff going on. There's the island nation of Istan down here, uh, the nation of Korna over here, which is much more deserty, and then the nation of Vabi up here, which is like um, a bit more like Arabian themed, I guess, whereas the Istani and uh, Korna are a bit more like traditional, like Egyptian slash African themed. Um, Obviously, Egypt is part of Africa, but what I mean is like that, like the you know Egyptian architecture style. Uh, Rash Asa, ah, General Morgan, the sun spheres have arrived. They don't look like much. I will evaluate their skills, War Marshal Varish, and report back to you. Hmm, I'll be surprised if they prove a challenge to our soldiers. Or join me in Kamadan when you are finished, Morgan. <laughs> General Morgan. Is he going to give me some rum? Lissa teaches us that the glory of leadership is found in duty and honor. The honorable gen here. Roll. A high sun spirits. Your superiors could not stop talking about your valor defending Chabak against the Corsairs. My superior and ruler of Korna, Varevesh Asa, or Master Varevesh Asa, is curious about. Is curious and wishes me to report on your capabilities. Jeez, I can't speak. I'm sorry. I heard that you're a highly trained sun spirit leader. I look forward to watching you trade blows with my finest. Rest assured you'll be compensated for your time and trouble. You're ready to begin the demonstration? Let me know. We are ready. So, this is a... Um, this fight is interesting. Essentially, we have to get enough of these guys down. You can actually fail this quest. It's relatively easy to do. Um, in order to pass the quest, you actually need to get more kills than the other side. But they will constantly be rezzing each other. Um... Oh, that's a heal for me, not for him, excuse me. 
I need to work on this build a little bit. That's going to be one of the things I work on uh, relatively soon. Probably as soon as we get access to our first elite skill is when I'm really going to go over the build. Uh, ooh, we actually should be able to pick up our Sun Spear skill. I wasn't thinking about that, but we should be able to pick that up now. So that should be cool. Also, do we have faction? We do have faction, so I might be able to go grab the faction skill as well. Actually, wait, no, no, no. I don't think you can buy the faction skill from here. Guild Hall. Yeah, so there's a there's a faction skill for each of the uh, the factions from Guild Wars Faction Deluxe and Kurzik. It's the same skill, just different icon. Um, we showed off the Ritualist one during the Let's Play, but they actually went back and added Dervish and um, Paragon ones to those skills. So that'd be cool. All right, I think I should talk to Morgan. What a demonstration! Cormier has trained you well indeed. My men would do well to take the lessons you have taught them to heart. I would hate to cross you on the field of battle, Sun Spears. For your compensation, please speak with Emissary Damajan. Damajan? Damajan. <laughs> oh, we didn't get a look at this outpost. Um, I'm sorry. We normally do a run through the outposts. Um, so let's do a little bit of a run through the outpost. So, oh, here's a shore watcher. This probably should. This is something I can kind of talk about. So, the Sun Spears are. The Sun Spears are like um, the kind of the good guys of all of Alona. Even though they're based out here in Istan, like, Sun Spears help all of Alona is kind of their thing. So, these Shore Watchers are more of the like, local military um, or local, you know, helpers. Have us a bit of a look around. Got some tables with charts and fire. Oh, man, that crackling fire. Oh, man. I love MMOs. MMOs are just so great. <laughs> I love just chilling out here in the fire. It'd be cool just to hang out here, you know? Ah. Games are awesome. Anyway, let's talk to this dude real quick. Joe Morgan holds honor, loyalty, and devotion to the five gods above all else. He also rewards such service. I must get back to my studies. In fact, I could use some help if you have the time. I'm sure you, Joe Morgan, will appreciate your continued assistance to the Cornyn delegation. I actually think that's going to be next episode's thing, but we're going to have a little bit of a look around here while I talk and gush about video games. I don't know, this game is just gives me comfy feelings. I've played this game so long ago, and I kind of do get that in games like Guild Wars 2 as well. Um, you just kind of just like happy to be in the game world and doing stuff, or not even doing stuff, just walking around looking at things. Um, there's like some spices and stuff back here. Here's like some some local leaves, like a chessboard. Um, here's a symbol here. This is We saw this in one of the other um, areas as well. This is some ancient symbol that is left over from the, uh, the Primeval Dynasty days. Um, quite interesting. Some building here. The, like, astro globes that reflect the light. The portals, they also changed the portal icon between games, so that looks different than the, uh, the older ones. Um, quite a few different henchmen here. Quite an upgrade. Is these guys holding the globes kind of a reference to, uh, what's it? Atlas from Greek, or from mythology? Um, and here's, like, some big structure in the middle. But anyway, I want to appreciate you, I appreciate you for hanging out today. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.